Hello everyone. Thank you for being here and happy new year to everyone. This is Javier Peñalba and this is your Transmute Yourself weekly live show, your first show of the year, where we talk about topics related to fear of commitment so that you can create fulfilling relationships. Today, we'll talk about a little bit of a different, more I would call like a special topic. And the title of the event is The Magic Behind Silence. It's about the top insights from my New Year's silent retreat. So let me ask you, let's say, have you ever been in a situation in which you have, um, let's say you're having dinner or lunch with someone and you have just that person in front of you or a couple of people and there's silence filling, the, filling up the space between you and you want to fill up that space of silence with words, right? You feel that impulse and you just follow it. You just say the first thing that comes to your mind because maybe it's uncomfortable to be too long in that silence. Now, a different situation, let's say that you're lying in your couch and you have no access to your cell phone, no access to your TV, no access to your computer, nothing. You cannot distract yourself at that moment from your head and from the silence. So this is, you just add on top of that, the fact of not being able to eat solid food. So these are the things that we did for New Year's. We could not speak for three days. Me and, and my wife, we did this three day retreat at home. We could not speak. There's, there was no music, of course, no electronics, nothing to distract us and liquid diet. It may sound a little strange for you, but the main purpose was to be able to familiarize ourselves with ourselves, with our minds in the silence and to just experiment and to see how that worked, if, if it worked at all, right? And um, this is the second year in a row that we do it. I will tell you later how I have felt differently from the first year, now that I did it on, on a second time. And how can we relate this to commitment phobia or to fear of commitment or in general to anxiety, right? Because sometimes this is very related to that as well. And um, with people with fear of commitment, some one of the main topics that comes, uh, the more that I speak to people with that is that there's some sense of boredom, boredom with the present moment and also looking on... Uh, having the tendency to think that the grass is greener on the other side. So we are always, or this, this tendency of the mind to seek what it doesn't have and to be not at ease, be restless with what you have at that moment. And, and through silence and through this experiment that I did, I will tell you how we can conquer that fear of boredom, that fear of monotony and that fear of something uh, that we're missing out on the other side. And I think that this is very powerful because we reduce, so to say, that addiction to stimuli and to things that we think will fill us up and will make us happy. So let's start with the first insight that I had. I call it the purgatory of silence, purification of the mind. So this might sound a little bit too spiritual, but let me just put it this way. I think that this is very practical as well. We tend to run away from our minds in general because it, it, it's constantly speaking, it's constantly saying stuff to us, right? And that generates emotions and we don't want to face that. In general, that's uncomfortable and, and it's totally normal. So what do we do if we have a problem sometimes and we're sick of my, our minds coming back with what we think is a problem and telling us things? So we, we distract ourselves. We get our our mobile phone, we look for Instagram and see like stories from people or Facebook or YouTube and then we distract ourselves and then we feel for, for a moment that our minds have come to a rest and they're not speaking that much, right? And I'm not saying that's wrong. I think that once in a while to get a distraction, it's okay, but to do it constantly, that creates a problem and I will speak about that in a moment. So. Again, we have a mind that are speaking all the time that sometimes come with problems and we run away from that. And of course, in the silence, we feel that more. We, the only thing that we can hear is our minds, right? That was my experience right now. Complete silence. The only thing that I could hear were, were my thoughts. So 
as I didn't have anything to run away um, or to distract myself with, uh, the only thing that's left is silence. And this is something that we run away from as well, the silence, because that's where our thoughts are maximized, our thoughts are louder. So once we're able to go through the silence for some time in meditation or simply contemplating and being yourself in a situation that you would consider normally boring, then you would start hearing those thoughts and paying more attention to, well, oh, this is what my mind is saying. And then you lose fear to your head. You're comfortable with your head. And of course that can take time. It's even scary. I've talked to other people and I've told them what I did, right? These three days of full silence. And they say like, oh, I would go crazy after the first day with all that my mind has to say. But what if you can just observe everything that your mind has to say and just work out the things that maybe are recurring too much and maybe for the rest, just observe it. So that's pretty much what I did. And I would say that's more like a cure. The first antidote that we look is distraction, which I think that it has a rebound effect because it's a bit of like addiction, addictive uh, news, uh, Instagram, uh, social media that creates some addiction to these emotions of stimuli and adrenaline. On the other hand, what I consider more like a cure, a sustainable long term cure is awareness and contemplation and even silence and meditation because you are you can get so familiarized with what's in your head that you're conquering boredom you're conquering monotony and then if you cannot leave your house for any reason for quarantine for example or because there's this pandemic outside that's not even anything that makes you scared anymore because you have already conquered that part of your mind of, of yourself so I would encourage anyone that likes self-growth, that would like to have some type of spiritual uh, growth and purification to try it out, maybe not for three days, that can sound a little bit too much maybe for the first time, but maybe a day or even half a day and just to see how that feels. And to, again, uh, I, at least in my case, it was very, very powerful. And I will tell you a little bit more about that right now. So that was the first part, like what I call spirit, uh, mental or the, the purification through silence, right? When we're used to our binds, when we don't run away from our thoughts anymore, and we're, when we're comfortable in the silence with boredom, and when we can find that inner peace behind all of that. Now, what's the second thing, the second consequence or insight following up with what I'm saying is the appreciation of the little things and of any moment and anything that we have. So let me first tell you again about the liquid diet part. I could not eat any solids for three days, right? So the first day it was okay. The second day at night I was starting to get hungry. And what I noticed is that on the second day I was appreciating any dish, liquid dish, any soup or anything that we would get on the table. And I was just super happy to, to see it there and to taste it. And that's something that, of course, on, on, an, on the every, on the day to day basis, we don't do. We don't appreciate that much what we have because we have it all the time. But once you can cut away a little bit what you have on the day to day and, and then make it scarce, like, like I did in this situation, uh, I would appreciate anything because I was hungry, right? Then, of course, after the retreat, I was super happy and super glad to see food again. So that's the first thing. You start appreciating some of the things that you usually do not appreciate. And then as there's silence, as there's only thoughts in your head. After some time, what I noticed is that that was reduced. Maybe after the first day, I wasn't thinking that much. Of course, I was meditating as well. But as I was not thinking that much, I started noticing that in silence I was able to appreciate uh, the subtlety of the present moment in general. And I will give you a great example of that. Remember that I, I after a meditation on my second day, I think it was, I went to the forest just to take a walk. And 
I was noticing again my thoughts, trying to come back always to the present moment and to find peace and the beauty of the moment. Uh, and I noticed the trees, how they were waving, how they were moving from left to right because it was a little bit windy. So after noticing that movement of the trees, I, I somehow got a little glimpse of what, what it really was to be present without thoughts for a moment. And I, I thought of it as a perfection of the movement, as if it were in slow motion. That was a little strange for me, but I liked it. And after appreciating con and contemplating that movement of the trees and the leaves, I turned my head and I saw the, the ground, right? And the, the dirt path that I was walking on. And I noticed the position of the different rocks on the path. And what it came to me for, for a split moment, for a split second was that every single rock was exactly in the position that it needed to be at that point of my life and of existence in general for it to be perfect. So I just saw perfection in that path. It might sound a little bit cuckoo, but as, as thoughts subside and as, as you're embedded and immersed in silence, you start noticing a lot more the subtleties of things. And that's what I noticed at that moment, that the path was perfect with the rocks just as they were. And then I extended that thought and I thought of my family, I thought of my friends, of my now wife and and I just saw perfection in everyone that I thought of. For that moment I felt that every single person in the, in the world was exactly where they had to be and that that was perfection in like the overall greater scheme of things. And I think that was powerful and that I wouldn't have been able to do that and to achieve that level of let's say appreciation and contemplation without having spent so much time in silence. So that's the second thing. And I think that's something that you can take on your day to day. You don't need to go on a full time meditation or uh, do two or three hours of meditation or something like that, that you can contemplate and appreciate when there's silence, for example, at home to just see around, look around and see uh, what's beautiful about what you have in front of you. What's beautiful about a plant, for example, the plant that's behind me or about a picture of your family or that painting that's on the wall, things like that, that we usually just give for granted, take for granted. And we can stop that and we can start noticing those things. Not necessarily in the silence, but it helps, uh, believe me. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about is what I call breaking away some from, from limiting beliefs of ourselves. In my case, personally, I always said and I always thought that I needed a lot of food to survive. I always said like I'm a big guy and I have a certain weight and I want to I need to keep it to be healthy and I need a lot of food. I also thought that uh, my emails and my cell phone needed a lot of supervision. That's why I needed to check uh, very often, maybe once in a while, how things were going on my phone, for example this type of things, or that I needed distraction once in a while, which is normal, right? But after those three days, I realized that those things that we consider that we need in order to be ourselves, in order to even to survive, they're just ideas in our head. They're just, we, we can transform those needs into wants by realizing that they are not necessary for our survival in general. So again, let's say with the food, I, I realized that I don't need that much food in order to be even with a certain level of energy. Of course, I need more than just liquids, but uh, it's not anymore that I need a lot of food every day or that I don't, for example, I spent those three days without looking at my cell phone and I still was able to survive and nothing happened. You know, I had that split thought for a moment that maybe um, and that was scary that maybe if I turned on my phone after those three days that someone would have died You know, I know where that comes from that thought and I said, okay, if it's that way I cannot do anything in any case about it at this moment 
And yeah, there's friends, there's people that know where I live. I'm sure that there will be a way to contact them and they would come here. So I just left, absurd that thought and let it fall again. And nothing happened, right? Another thought that came uh, to, to defend me from that thought of, of death was, for example, why in, if in 365 days or 362 days nothing happened, like someone dying, why would it happen within those three days that I'm off? And that just helped me like to relax myself and then I came back to the present moment. So this type of things, they're just limiting beliefs that the world needs us all the time or that we're, uh, our, our attention has to be everywhere. It, it's just a thought. Those are wants, those are things that we can do, we, we can uh, satisfy those desires, but they're not as necessary as, as we think. And that's it. So it's like breaking away from those limiting beliefs. This is it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the couple of insights that I had. And if you have any questions, any comments, please let me know. I really appreciate everyone that has been here watching. And I will see you again next week. Mm -hmm.